Matt, Guilty. how did you get where you are right now? Yeah, it's a long, strange trip. Um, to your point, I started out even before investment banking. I was in search engine optimization, and I did that while I was at school at Fordham. And that gave me a sense for the power that technology has and the role that it could play. Uh, but I also needed to learn a lot more about the world. And so I, I wanted to finance investment banking. And um, I studied school here in New York. I went to a pretty large investment bank um, down on Wall Street. And I stayed there for about four years. About a year in, I actually wanted to leave. Nothing against the firm. I just had other ideas and aspirations. And they sat me down and said, you know, you're just getting started. What do you want to do? And I, and I said, well, I want to start a hedge fund. And, and they, they looked at me and they said, you know, you're 25. What are you talking about? And I said, well, I, won't, I want to try um, and they tried talking me out of it. I didn't want to. So they gave me the permission to stand one up while I was still working at the firm, as long as I put all my trades through compliance. They could see that I wasn't doing anything silly. Anyway, um, and it was a great experience trying to launch my own hedge fund. And for the audience out there, um, I'm not being introduced as a hedge fund manager. And, and there's a reason for that. The hedge fund failed. Um, we only got about 30 or 35 million under management and you need something like 100 million under management to succeed. But it was a great experience for me. And it was also uh, useful to be inside of an incubator, essentially, to be at, at an investment bank while I was trying to do that at the same time. So, you know, for all the entrepreneurs out there, taking risk is the way you get successful. But if you could take structured risk, that makes you a little bit safer at the same time. So um, anyway, I learned a lot. And then the investment bank was sort of uh, eye opening for me because I, I started to see that you know, the, the role of technology was having an influence on economics and the role of technology's influence on the economics of these industries were increasing as time was going on. So tech was playing a bigger and bigger role. So I jumped from tech into finance and then immediately I started to get the bug and think like, oh, maybe I've made a, a mistake. Maybe I should be uh, back in technology. So it's exactly. And you're a technologist now, right? Yeah. And you have an amazing LinkedIn prof profile. I encourage everyone check out Matt's profile and check out his experiences and just connect with Matt. How about that? But we wanted to talk today about how technology changes the business outlook, the business model. So what have you discovered in your journey, Matt? Well, you know, so after the hedge fund failed, um, I had some private capital left over. And so I invested into five different companies uh, and almost immediately two of them went out of business. Uh, and one of them, I could have maybe done something to help them if I had more information. And I realized that there was a little bit of information asymmetry. There was information that the business had that I as an investor didn't have. Not that they were keeping it from me. It's just it was locked away in a CRM um, and it wasn't easy to get to. And so that's when I decided that I could build tools, technology that could help me maybe reach inside the CRM and pull out the status of a company. Uh, and that's why I founded Rev Systems, which is a revenue intelligence software startup. And we started up last year. Uh, and basically, we connected the CRM. Like when you take your car to the dealer and they hook the uh, car up to the check, the check engine light, little battery, and it reads and says, the computer says, oh, this code came up, this code came up, this code came up. I thought to myself, why isn't there a check engine light for the revenue engine? Um, so I built one and then I went to the other, you know, two companies, three companies that were left and said, please put this inside your CRM so I could get a case study or two and learn if it works and just get good information. Um, and that's really been a lot of fun and a lot of success. And I've also learned a lot about the role that technology is playing um, in back office and in middle office. And so that's, that, you know, this is where generative AI and things like that are starting to become more and more prevalent because you know, our ability to create information uh, very quickly is allowing us to do things like scenario plan. Um, we're able to do causal analysis and look at the difference between, you know, changing in velocities or pipeline dynamics and all sorts of other things. It's really an incredible world.